Getting people the right help when they need it is a big challenge for almost every business. In this video, I'm going to be doing a step-by-step -step example about setting up a form using conditional logic. And this conditional logic is going to solve this very problem for us. So if that's of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Hi, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, where we build automated and streamlined database processes for our clients so that they can spend more time in their business and less time working on the day-to-day -day grind. If that's of interest to you, definitely swing by our website and check out the different resources that we've linked below. But without further ado, let me just go ahead and get into the meat of this. So we are going to be building, or we have built, a form in a software called JotForm. And the reason that we're using this advanced form uh, software is because it allows for conditional logic inside of our form. Now, most form softwares allow for this, but you might also notice that Airtable, which we will be connecting to as our database solution, uh, Airtable does have a form uh, functionality in their software. But as of the time of this filming, it doesn't yet allow for conditional logic in those form creations. So for that purpose, we're going to be using JotForm, but you could use pretty much any other form software. Uh, let's see, I know Typeform does this, obviously JotForm does, uh, and there's you know numerous other forms that we've built solutions in that allow for conditional logic. So this is the gist of what we're trying to get at here. And so for this use case, I'm going to be uh, building a solution from the perspective of our company, but you could use the same kind of logic and uh, systematic thinking to apply it to whatever problems you are, you're faced with. So specifically, people reach out to us for three different main reasons. The first one is they are looking for help building. Uh, they want to hire us to build a solution. The second one is they want our help coaching them and training them to build their own solution. And then the third type of help is people just reach out and they say, hey, I've got a quick question. Can you answer it? And so we want to build a form that is, is dynamic and changes based on what they answer throughout the form. So going and jumping into my screen here, you see that I've already built this form and I'm calling it the contact form. And at the top of the form, we're going to grab three main pieces of information. That is their name, their email, and then what kind of help are they looking for? If they're looking to just have a question answered, then the, the follow-up questions are going to be different. Whereas if they say, hey, we actually want to talk to you about you know hiring you to build a project for us, of course, we're going to send them to a different place, right? The type of help they get from us depend is dependent on what type of help they're looking for. So that is the purpose of the first three questions. Now, you'll see I've got a bit of a, a breaker there or a, a spacer, after which we've got just a bit of text, which is going into the questions about Airtable and or automation. And so this particular part of the form is only going to be viewed by people who are, who are saying that they have a question to, uh, to ask and that they're looking for some help. So basically, anybody who answers that they are looking to uh, hire us to either build or train is not going to see this part. This is going to be set up with conditional logic to only go to people with a question. And so then we're going to basically say, hey, we would love to, you know, uh, provide as much information and value to the no code solution or community as possible. Please enter your information here. And then here's where they can put in their question. They can grant permission. And once they are all set with that, then this form will be complete. So let's then, so this is the, the outline of the form. And of course, as I mentioned, if they mark one of the first two things, then we're going to send them somewhere else. Specifically, we're going to invite them to schedule some time to, to chat with us on a consultation. So basically, there's two outcomes to this form. Either feel free to you know book a consultation with us or alternatively, ask your question. And so that's how this is all set up. So now we're going to go into the settings portion and inside of the conditions on the side over here is where you'll see we've built conditions that are uh, that are going to drive the the flow of this form. Specifically, uh, looking here, you see that we say, let's open this condition up in the case where they answer the question, how can we help? 
And that was, if you recall, the question with the three different options. If their answer is not equal to, I have a question, that is, it's the first or second option, then we're going to redirect them to a Calendly URL where they can schedule time to uh, chat with me. Alternatively, backing out of this, in the case where it is equal to, to that they have a question, in that case, we want to then show answer or questions five, six, and seven. So let's take a look at what this actually looks like live. So if we go to the publish section of this and we open up this form, you'll see that it only starts with the first three questions. I can go ahead and fill this out with some, you know, uh, example information. So I'll bring in my own data there. And you'll see that if I say that I want to hire Gap Consulting uh, for help building a project and I click submit, I'm going to get redirected to that URL where I can schedule some time uh, on the calendar. Alternatively, let's pop this open again and answer this differently. If I fill out this information again, but I say I have a question, as soon as I select I have a question, all of these other parts of the form become available to me. And this, my friends, is the conditional logic that, as I mentioned, Airtable can't do with its forms, but pretty much any form software that is specifically form software can do. So now we've got this form that we can fill out with our question. Um, I can't figure out roll-up fields. And then they grant permission uh, to for us to uh, do a video on this topic, and they submit. Perfect. And then they get sent here. So this form is working perfectly. And so really, the first part of this is just showcasing the power of the conditional logic that you can build inside of these forms. And now for the next part, automating this data and bringing it into an Airtable database. So as you'll see here, with the couple of things that I've just filled out, here is uh, the contact person, Gareth. And here is the uh, information to the two things that we just filled out. Let me actually bring in the uh, created date and timestamp here so that we can uh, verify that these actually just, just were created. So you'll see that these just happened within moments of each other and that these previous ones are older records. And of course, there's a bit of a, um, a confusion here with a, with a symbol. It looks like the apostrophe that I put in kind of got garbled in, uh, in translation, but the gist of it, it still got you know, brought over just fine. And so these, the next step of this is how do we build the automation? So really quickly, going into Zapier, all, the ideal way to build an automation coming from Jotform or any form submission company, it, if you're not going to build a direct integration with your database, and I have a couple reasons around that, but if you're not doing that, then the best way to do it is to grab a webhook. Webhooks can seem a little overwhelming, but they're actually pretty straightforward. We set it up by saying that the trigger that we're using for this automation is going to be webhooks by Zapier, and we use a catch hook. We can customize this if we want to. You'll notice I haven't made any uh, alterations here. But the important part is that we grab this webhook uh, URL. So I just copied it to my clipboard by selecting copy. And then over here in Zapier, when we go into the settings and we go down again to, oh, excuse me, I said Zapier. Inside of Jotform, we need to tell it that we're integrating with this webhook. So we need to go down into the settings of Jotform, with this particular form, click integrations, click webhooks, and here is where we want to paste in that webhook URL. And that's it. Basically what this is saying is when this form is completed, this webhook is going to trigger and that tells Zapier that it's time to perform an automation. So then jumping back into our Zap, once we've got the webhook all built correctly, we can pull some example data in, which you'll see I've, I've done already. So these are just answers to the form. And then we can come down here and there are, this is a two-step automation because first we need to find and or create the contact person. And then we need to link in our third step, we need to create a record in the form submission of the table. So in layman's terms, we need to first create or find the person in our database, in our contacts table. And then after we've done that, we need to make the form submission. So for example, 
let me uh, go back and drop it back in one more time and submit this form. Let's suppose I used another name. Uh, maybe I'll just use my last name. And I'll use an example email address. And it doesn't matter what I answer to part three necessarily. What we want to have happen and what will happen back in our database is we need to create a new person because we don't have this, uh, this email, Gareth at example.com is not already in our database. And so now this new person will be created with a uh, submission to the form. So the important part here is making sure that we have our tables set up correctly and that we take our zap one step at a time. That is we find or create the contact. And so when we set this up, we're going to use the, uh, we link to the proper base. We look at the contacts table and we're doing a search by email. So we're saying I'm looking at the email field in the table and I'm going to compare that to the email that was entered in the form. That's this element right here. If I don't find that email, then I will create a new record and I will create it with the name and email address. If I do find it, then this step is done. We've located the record. And then going into step three, this is where we create a new record in our form uh, table. So just again, now that we've found the contact, now we have to create a new form submission and we need to put in the type of help that they requested. If they had any answers to these questions, they'll be sent in here. And then of course we need to link back to that contact as well. So I'll be going into more detail about what we're gonna do with this table in the next week's video. But for now, let's leave it at that. And uh, if you have any questions, definitely drop them on below. Let me know how I can help. As always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, we have a lot of resources that we've put together on our site, so swing on by and see how we can help. We have a blog that includes free content every week. We also built an Airtable free crash course that'll get you up to speed in under two weeks. And if you're looking for something more advanced, you can book some time to have a discussion with me. I will hop on a Zoom call with you and we can talk about what your needs are and how our company might be able to help. So if that's of interest, swing on by. Look forward to connecting with you soon.